Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today what I have for you is episode 8 of my FIFA 22 Bradford City career mode. Now today what we have for you is three more uh, episodes, I was going to say. Three more games for you in today's episode. We have Bristol Rovers at home, Hartlepool at home and we also have Swindon away. We'll simulate the first two games and we will be playing this final game against Swindon in the league. We're currently sat third, three points off top of the table. We've not been on a great run of form at the moment and we've still managed to be in that automatic promotion rush uh, rush challenge i'm still through my words i'm recording this late on sunday night it's been a long day just got out of the shower let me pick this team for the match that i'm going to use against bristol rovers but before we do that make sure you drop a like on today's episode subscribe as well if you are new and i shall see you all in a second here we have it then, this is the team that I'm going to be using for this match against Bristol Rovers. We've got O'Donnell in goal, a back four of Threlkeld, O'Connor, Canavan and Rydhalge. Songo and Watt as the two holding midfielders, Vernon on the right, Issa on the left and Callum Cook in behind Andy Cook. We've gone with what is on paper, our full strength side. You know, Bristol Rovers, they're going with their... 5-2-3. This game obviously finished 2-2 in real life. They got a last minute equaliser. So fingers crossed we can get a better result than that. But they've got some very good players. Collins, Coots, Kilger. Very good players at this level as well. You've got some experienced players in there. Yeah, I'm not saying Paul Coots isn't an experienced player. But you know what I mean. You've got players like Rodman, etc. And it will be Andy Cook to get us underway. We need to get back to winning ways. Because I don't think we've, we... Did we maybe win the last game? But apart from the other two games in the, uh, the last episode, did not go very well. Rydhal, on the ball. Gives it into Abouita. Cuts it across. It's cleared by Bristol Rovers. But all the way, it's managed to find its way back to Charles Vernon. And just after the half an hour mark, he makes it 1-0. He obviously scored our goal in real life at the time of recording against Northampton at the weekend. He's managed to get on the score sheet in this game. It's a very nice, well-worked goal. The player was just going a little bit too quick for me to actually get my words out in time. But just before the halfway point, we managed to take the lead. Bristol Rovers coming forward here straight away, though. We will be able to deal with it. Andy Cook on the ball. Bit of space for him. He's crossed his blocks. He's managed to find his way into Vernon again. And he's 2-0 just before the half-time point. Vernon's got a brace. We're in a very good position to pick up the three points. But don't forget, in the last episode, we went 2-0 up and ended up losing 3-2 to a relegation-threatened team. So it's nothing to write home about right now as we approach that halfway point. The referee is going to blow his whistle for half-time. It's been a very dominating first half. I've been very impressed with what I have seen. Rydhald is looking a little bit tired. So we'll get Matty Folds on for him at left back and we're also going to get Susson on for Songo and we're also going to get Liangle on for Andy Cook so three changes at the break but we've got so many games coming now with a game coming on Tuesday as well I don't want to overwork the players so we'll get them three changes made at half time and we'll get into the second half Callum Cook on the ball bit of space for him give it to Vernon back to Elliot Watt into Levi Sutton back to Watt Vernon now on the ball looking for his hat trick oh what a goal oh it's a Charles Vernon masterclass he steps past his man so easily and he manages to find the back of an net. It's Bradford City 3, Bristol Rovers nil. This is exactly the sort of result I was looking for in this game. We've gone with our full strength side. Usually I make a change here or there. I've gone with the full strength side and it's definitely paid off in today's game. Even with the substitutions at half time. You could say it's been a one man team but all the goals have been well worked throughout a lot of the players in the team. Vernon will take the plaudits though, and rightly so, he's, he's bagged a beautiful hat-trick. Bristol Rovers get a goal back, I mean, I don't know how that's gone into honest. It's just a random hit and hope from distance. Bristol Rovers have a goal back, it's now 3-1. That's not really ideal, is it? Not long left to go now in this game. Bristol Rovers coming forward, but that, thankfully for our sake, is offside. It's a very dominating performance. It's a shame, unfortunately, we weren't able to pick up a clean sheet in this match. I mean, it's a similar result, isn't it? Look, remember... A couple of seasons ago, when we beat Bristol Rovers 3-1, another player, Charlie White, got a hat-trick in that game. But look at them statistics. We dominated from start to finish, and that is a beautiful way to start off today's episode. I shall see you all once I pick the team for the match against Hartlepool. Well, we've just got the league table through as well, and as it stands, Stevenage lost their last game, so we are joint top of the league on goal difference, joint with Oldham and Stevenage. Who would have thought it? Also, Gareth Evans is back available from his suspension, but as it was a straight red, we just won't play him throughout all of the games in today's episode. So he also won't feature against Hartlepool or against Swindon. Here we have it then. This is the team that I'm going to be using for this game at home to Hartlepool. We've been forced into a lot of changes. As you can see, a lot of tired bodies down here. If you look at Threlkeld 
absolutely shattered after that game against Bristol Rovers. The players gave it absolutely everything, but we line up in a 4-4-2 formation. It's a rare occurrence that we've actually slid with this formation, but O'Donnell starts in goal. A back four of Sutton, O'Connor, Staunton and Rydhalge. Roberts on the left, Gilead on the right, Watt and Songo in the middle. It says Songo can't play central midfield. We all know he can there. And also Lee Angle and Andy Cook leading the line for the Bantams. Let's get into this match though against Hartlepool. They've got a couple of tired players. They've gone with the 5-3-2, so a similar formation to what we've played against last game, except they've gone with a more central version of it. We obviously lost this game 3-1 in real life. I believe it's our only home defeat of the season in real life, so... Fingers crossed we can pick up where we left off in the last game, but as the team's heavily changed through tiredness, Hartlepool get us underway. Hartlepool come forward here straight away, and oh my god, it's not even four minutes on the clock. Who could have seen that coming? Not even four minutes on the clock. Hartlepool take the lead. It's Goodwin with the goal, and Hartlepool are proving that maybe you should go quality over fatigue, really. And they're coming forward once again here. It's very well worked play. But every time we seem to come up against this 5-3-2 formation, we always seem to struggle. We're coming forward here with an attack of our own. Angle gives it out wide to Roberts. Into Songo. Rydalge. Good play this from us. Angle on the ball now. Roberts loses out though. Songo on the ball here for the Bantams. Andy Cook finds Lee Angle. Finds Elliot Watt has to score and he does. It's been pretty much all Bradford City since Hartlepool took the lead. Elliot Watt's been getting into them areas a few times. We just couldn't quite work that pass. And just before half-time, we managed to level things up. No added time at the end of the first half. It's been a game of very few chances. We've had some nice passages of play, but we've just not really worked that final ball. I'm not going to make any substitutions at the break, but you know, Roberts is looking very tired. His stamina can't be very good, can it? Because he always seems to be absolutely shattered. Yeah, 63 stamina is not great at all, but Cook has 68, and he's... Never really tired. I guess it might be different positions. Let's get underway though for the second half. And Lee Angle does. Ride out on the ball. Gives it into Jan Songo. Andy Cook tries to find Elliot Watt. But he can't complete the pass. Let's make some substitutions. Cook's not played very well at all. We'll get Keelan Lavery on for him. We're also going to get my folds on for Ride out again. Who's looking very tired. And I think we're also going to get Robinson on. He can't really play left midfield. Can Angle play there? Angle can play left midfield, so we'll put him on the left. Robinson and Lavery up front to maybe cause some havoc. They're the changes that we've made. We're going for it. We're bringing more strikers on. Jan Songo on the ball finds Lee Angle, who finds the top corner just before our substitutions are meant to be made. Lee Angle finally puts us in front. He's had a few opportunities in this match, and thankfully on that occasion he's taken it. He's found the top corner just before he moves out onto that left-hand side. It's a fantastic finish. It's a great comeback. We finally managed to turn it around. It looked very ropes when very early on Hartlepool took the lead, but since then it's been all Bradford City. And thankfully, because of Lee Angle and also Elliot Watts' goal in the first half, it's now Bradford City 2, Hartlepool United 1. Elliot Watt on the ball, finds Lavery, into Robinson, back to Keelan Lavery, and he wraps the game up, the two substitutes combining, he finished 3-1, the other way around in real life, it's going to look like it's going to finish 3-1 to the Bantams in this game, but all credit there, has to go to Jan Songo, I don't know if you'll see it in the highlight, he absolutely sprinted from the halfway line, all the way back to win the ball back, set us on the counter attack, it finishes full time, Bradford City 3, Hartlepool United 1, we had three shots all game, managed to score three goals. It's back-to-back -back wins. What an episode this has been so far. All we need now is to complete it with a win away at Swindon. Let's get into it. Here we have it then. This is the team that I'm going to be using for this game against... Who are we playing? We're playing Swindon. Their current is at 20th in the table. It worked for the first game of today's episode. I'm going full strength. O'Donnell in goal. Threlkeld, O'Connor, Canavan and Rydhalge is our back four. Songo and Watt as the two holding midfielders. Vernon on the right, Issa on the left and Cook in behind Cook. few changes on the bench though because you've got players like Roberts, Gilead, Sutton who are a little bit tired. We've also gone without a goalkeeper in this game just because I may, might want to get Lavrio Robinson on. Might want to get Angle on though. There's options on there. Suki Enike and Skills are also there as well. Let's get into it. Here we have it then. It will be Andy Cook to get us underway for the final game of today's episode. Two wins on the spin. We obviously picked up one point from them two games in real life. We've managed to pick up five more with the back-to-back -back wins. We won this match 3-1 in real life as well. A Derek Adams masterclass. I'm going to look to repeat that in this game as we're coming forward here very early on. Charles Burnham in on goal. Strikes. It's just too easy. It's just too easy. Three minutes on the clock. Burnham's on fire. He's on absolute flames in this episode. He got his hat-trick against Bristol Rovers. 
and now he's got a goal away at Swindon. It was far too easy for us to create that opportunity. Cook with a simple 1-2 with Charles Vernon. He's never going to miss from there. Three minutes on the clock. It's Swindon Town nil. Bradford City won. I mean, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Vernon this season now has six goals in 11 matches to his name. And what a start. Swindon looking to it as with a reply straight away here. Now kind of been trying to keep up with Gladwin and that was just far too easy. I mean, I don't know where Paul the O'Connor's gone there. He just kind of went... He, he went and didn't come back. I don't, he, he like stepped up for no reason. I didn't do the offside trap. He stepped up and... I mean, yeah, you can't really see it there. I'm trying to cover with Canavan. Not the ide that ideal player to be trying to cover with. O'Donnell gets beaten at his near post. I'm not going to make a comment about that. But Gladwin straight away gets the horse back level. I mean, O'Donnell's tried to save it on the floor when it's gone above his head. And rightfully so, I'm absolutely fuming on the touchline. Well, what a lively start to the game. Six minutes on the clock. It's Swindon Town 1, Bradford City 1. Jack Payne carrying the ball forward here for Swindon up against Paulie O'Connor. Cuts inside on that left foot. Ball comes in. Where the hell is Threl Keld? It's off the post. He's then blocked by Niall Canavan. Threl Keld is absolutely nowhere to be seen. Swindon Town come forward here on the edge of our area. We'll manage to scramble that clear in the end. Two minutes of added time at the end of the first half. It was a very lively start to the game. Both teams getting on the score sheet inside six minutes. But apart from that, not a lot has really happened, to be honest. And there we go. That is the half-time whistle. Don't really plan on making any changes at the break, to be honest. Elliot Watt picked up a yellow card as well. I had to take a cynical yellow because they were on the counter-attack once more. I'm not going to make any changes at the break. I'm just going to get straight into this second half. And it will be Simpson to get us underway. Anthony Vernon Grant. on the ball, sprays it out wide, looking for Abou Issa. It's not a great pass, though. It's a terrible pass. It's behind Issa, and it's now time to make some changes. Uh, Songo needs to come off. He's looking absolutely shattered. We get Sonny in. Oh, oh, dear. We don't have a DM on the bench. Um, I mean, Matty Folds could probably play holding midfield. He's probably played there before in his screen. No, we'll get Sun Suki Enike on, because we need to take Ryder out, Joffrey, who's looking absolutely shattered. Um, we're also going to take Andy Cook off because he's not really done a fat lot and bring Keelan Lavery on for him. Three changes made. It's um, not the changes I would like to have made. I would like to have made some more offensive changes, but the options that are on the bench didn't really have much to work with. And Swindon on the attack here. Gilbert on the ball up against Pordy. That's a great challenge from Pordy. It's dangerous, still not away though. Hunt on the ball, and again, that's fantastic from Pordy O'Connor. He's so good, it, both in real life and on, and on this career mode. He's fantastic. No, that's not what I was trying to do. Oh, my God, that's a goal, isn't it? Oh, I was trying to play that back to O'Donnell. I wanted Carabin to play that to O'Donnell, not to Pordy. And if it was going to go to Pordy, you've got to make sure that it goes to him. We got a little bit lucky that the first shot didn't go in. There, I'm aiming that back to O'Donnell. Simpson with a strike off the post and 19 has a tap in. O'Donnell can't get across quick enough. Oh, I mean, we just, we just can never have a... AI do well and me do well. It's one or the other. Well, we've we've got a mountain to climb now. We don't really look like scoring. Vernon looking to carry us forward up the pitch. Plays a good ball into Callum Cook. Going to play it one more. Aboisa, bit of time, bit of space. Oh my God, how has he missed? How has he hit the crossbar from there? Oh my God, how the hell has he missed that? Come on, you've got to get across quicker. Throw Kel's been done, and that's game over. Oh, from looking like scoring at the other end to conceding. Oh, and 19's got a brace. Did he? I don't think he scored the first the first goal, did he? But he's definitely got two, and it's individual errors. It really is. Lavery's not very good. I thought, you know, it will come on. We need a bit of a poacher type player. Didn't really think it was a game for Theo Robinson or Lee Angle. And in the end, that substitution's probably cost me, to be honest. Not having enough firepower on the bench has probably cost us. Swindon score again. And with a couple of minutes left on the clock, surely that's probably game over now. Not long left to go now on today's clock. Unfortunately, it does finish full-time. Swindon 3, Bradford City 1. We had such a bright start. The early goal from Charles Vernon. In the end, just wasn't enough. Let's get into the post-match interview. All right, what do the media have to say then just after that? Probably design. not a fat lot, to be honest. What do you think went one, went wrong today? Probably just the lack of subs. Um, I mean, yeah, you can't win every week. We had a good start to the episode. Unfortunately, we weren't able to, to carry that on into the final game. Is your team lacking discipline? Um, winning's what matters. They can get yellow cards or red cards. I don't really mind if we're winning matches. We didn't win the match though. Swindon Town were the better team today, weren't they? And that last goal sealed it. 
Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not happy with what I saw. They deserve the criticism in the press. It just, it just wasn't really yep, good no enough to be questions. honest. Thanks. Well, at least we have a trip to Newcastle in the fourth round of the AFL Cup to start off to next episode with. But yeah, guys, that is where I am. going to leave it for today's episode. If you have enjoyed, make sure you drop a like on it. Subscribe if you are new as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.